He's got an investing style that focuses on contrarian thinking and common sense. Our next guest's Lycos Value Fund has returned more than 40% to investors over a one-year period. That helped it rank in the top five out of roughly 11,000 funds. To get its market outlook and some top picks, we are now joined by Constantine Lycos, president of Lycos Asset Management, and he joins us from Vancouver. Welcome to Market Sense, Constantine. Thank you. First of all, congratulations on those returns. That's a, that's a stellar achievement in this type of market condition. Well, thank you. Why don't we talk hasn't about... It hasn't been easy. No, I, I imagine it hasn't. Why don't we talk about your bigger picture macro thoughts, and then from there, we'll get into some of the stock-specific ones that you have. Okay. Um, my uh, bigger picture uh, outlook is, is for what most people expect. Uh, very long, uh, protracted periods of uh, low growth for particularly the developed world. Um, two main reasons for that. One is um, the baby boomers entering their retirement years, and they'll be consuming less, producing less, and generally helping bring down the levels of economic activity. And the second reason is the high levels of debt that the developed nations have accumulated and they're running big deficits and they need higher taxes to pay for the, uh, the debts, partly to pay for the benefits, retirement and medical, medical care for the um, baby boomers that are entering their retirement years. There, um, uh, Constantine, with that, there was a recent research report that came out of Morgan Stanley that mentioned that politics as an influence on the markets was going to be around for years, if not decades, because of the situation they found themselves in, the deep deficits and debt holes, have to be transferred to the citizens over a period of time in a contentious political environment. How long do you think it's going to take politicians and politics to resolve the situations they find themselves in right now? Unfortunately, a very long time because nobody wants to make the tough decisions. Um, if, you're, if you're an elected politician, uh, you need to make cuts to, let's say, health care benefits and retirement benefits and so on because what you promised uh, cannot be paid anymore. Uh, it's a very unpopular decision and you tend to pass it on to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. So I, I have no idea probably a long time. Uh, Constantine, you know, just to give the viewers sort of a uh, little optimism, because I've been on the same path as you for a long time. I've argued that the burden of debt was driving interest rates down to keep bond markets happy and that growth would be very weak for a long time. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you can either bite the bullet and deal with this or face a debt crisis or alternatively look to productivity growth to really drive economy. So you can grow your economy at a faster rate with the same or less inflation and that's the only way ultimately to get out of a debt crisis and since it speaks to your basic thesis um, you know maybe it'd be wise to give our, our, our viewers some uh, optimism in that respect. The optimism that I have is uh, this, this fiscal cliff, so-called fiscal cliff crisis is bringing the debate forward and hopefully uh, in the US they'll, they'll, they'll make some good steps uh, uh, towards uh, bringing some uh, some more revenue because they need it in order to pay for the debt. So, uh, if taxes have to go up uh, a little bit, that's probably not a bad thing for them. Uh, if they go up too much, it will be bad for the uh, short term for the markets. But if they, they make a good compromise, that will be that will be terrific. So they could be in a better shape that they they've been in years and have a uh, a. Uh, good long-term outlook, particularly with, uh, with something else that nobody else has, has been talking about, which is very, very positive, particularly for North America and particularly for the U.S. The, uh, the price for natural gas, I'm not a commodities uh, specialist, I'm sure on your, on your show there have been lots and lots of uh, extremely uh, smart and talented commodities analysts, but the, the, it, it seems to me that uh, there's a huge differential between the price of uh, natural gas that uh, the Europeans and Japanese have to pay and what uh, right. we now have to pay here in North America. And that's created a huge, I think it's a really big competitive advantage that's putting the, the industrial consumers of natural gas for whatever industries uh, natural gas has been used as, as an input. And I can think of uh, chemicals, uh, aluminum, steel, those sort of, uh, sort of uh, industries. Uh, they will have a big competitive advantage over, over those of uh, the Europeans or the Japanese. And the emerging markets have not been all that great at, at being able to produce cheap energy. And now we have this, uh, but presumably because of the, 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 the shale gas 
uh, this uh, excess supply of natural gas, and it puts uh, North America and the U.S. in particular in a, a very good position if they can resolve some of the problems that they have with, with the debt uh, by raising taxes, uh, reducing spending, right. entitlements, and so on, which, which are solvable problems. Uh, nobody wants to deal with them, but they, they can be solved. So I'm not like totally pessimistic for forever. I, I think we'll be able to generate pretty good returns. Uh, so, Constantine, in this, for, environment, for yeah. in this environment of uncertainty and somewhat greater risk than normal, what are some individual stocks that you would be buying? Um, I've got one stock pick for you that's uh, playing into the theme of uh, low growth for a long time to come. It's a uh, discount retailer in the U.S. by the name of Ross Stores. Ross Stores, uh, ticker ROST. Yes, uh, correct. Uh, they sell primarily brand name merchandise, uh, you know, whatever the website says, 20 to 60 percent less than department stores, and basically providing what the consumer wants, a good product at a good price, which just happens, just happens to be the, my investment philosophy for you know, buying stocks, good stocks at a good price. Uh, but people really want that, and they're able to deliver that to the consumer, and they're able to to generate a very high ROE, as the previous host was, uh, as guest rather was talking about, uh, uh, they've been doing that very, very consistently for a very long time, and I think they will continue to do so as long as uh, there is uncertainty there, economic uncertainty, a high level of unemployment, uh, and, and growth that's not particularly high. Because in the really good times, you want to be going out and spending on brand names uh, and paying full price because you want the choice more than anything else and not necessarily looking for the best deal out there. So that's that's uh, one that plays into that theme. And, and that's a stock that I've, uh, it's, it's the same type of chain as the TJ Maxx or Winners here in Canada. Uh, very popular with Canadians. It's just like it is in the U.S., TJ Maxx. Uh, so it's a great, great point. Constantine, and Constantine. This is you can, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, you know, I, I noticed you've got a 42% higher price target. I mean, this is a structural problem, this issue of, of um, restructuring economies and the price sensitivity of consumers. And I very much buy into this argument that you're making. But 42%, that's a huge uh, total return gain, I presume. It, it is. Um, and it doesn't have to go there in 12 months. It can just continue to maintain its uh, profitability and the multiple can stay the same. You'll still get a, a nice double digit return, but eventually uh, the, the, the fair value number will, will get hit either because you know, the fair value comes down or because, before, because the stock goes up. Uh, uh, hopefully the, the business continues to, to perform and uh, it will happen. It will just happen a year or two or three, it doesn't matter. They, 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 you'll get a very good return out of this thing as long as the business continues to, 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 to work well. Constantine, another one of your picks is Apple. That's a popular one that's been going through some tough times recently. That's a, uh, yeah, a really popular one, and it's come down recently. I, I have no idea why it's come down. My guess is everybody got pissed off with the, 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 the map issue, you can't get your street view on the new map application on the iPhone 5, it annoys me too. Uh, I, and it was up so much that people wanted to take profits, they found excuses. Uh, of course, more seriously, the, the pace of technological innovation from Apple appears to be slowing. Maybe that's why they, they sell off recently, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, technology companies, you have to watch very carefully because uh, if, if they, uh, they stop innovating or if they slow down the pace of innovation, they, they, uh, um, they can become obsolescent very quickly. All right, Constantine, but we're going to have to leave levels, it there. At these levels, it's a good price. We're going to have to leave okay. it there. I do thank you for joining us on Market Sense today. Oh, you're very welcome. That was Constantine Lycos, president of Lycos Asset Management, joins us from Vancouver. Up next, Peter and I are going to talk individual stock ideas. Stay with us.